Good afternoon, everyone. It seems you've arrived just in time for another episode of Storytime. This is the series where I take you all on audio adventures as we listen in to various tales and experiences. Well, on today's episode, we are once again listening into some more stories from an evening at the Arboretum, an encounter on a lonely dark back road, to even a home alone story. You're sure in for quite the stories. As always, if you haven't done it already, make sure you have the notifications on so you never miss another episode. Seems many of you have been missing the new Storytime videos, and it would be a shame if you missed one, especially if you were looking forward to it. But yeah, make sure you stay around after the last story for some bonus content. And with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Story number one, Evening at the Arboretum. Two days ago on Sunday, which happened to be my birthday, I decided to go to the Arboretum, located on the opposite side of campus. I was writing a paper for my art course I was taking, but I had trouble focusing in my dorm room. That's why instead of wasting my time in my room, I decided to get out for a while. I am currently 19 years old and attending university, in case you're wondering. This also takes place during spring break, so you can imagine the campus was pretty much empty. You see, while everyone chose to go spend time at the beach and go on vacation, I chose to stay back at school. Even so, you would occasionally see faculty walking around and doing their normal routines. Another thing to note was there was a little bookstore that was open during the week, so I never truly felt lonesome. If I needed a snack or a friendly face to talk to, I could go there. That was my destination before heading to the Arboretum. So, I ended up leaving my dorm room around sundown, and I proceeded to walk to the bookstore to pick up a few snacks. Inside, I'm welcomed with Amanda, who was at the front desk attending to another student. Amanda is a student my age who happens to work there, and from the looks of it, she chose to spend the week at campus to earn some extra money. Well, after picking up a few things, I go to pay for everything, and that's where I mention I'm going to the Arboretum. I get a reaction out of her when she tells me, Wait a minute, you do know the Arboretum's closed, right? I was there yesterday myself, but one of the staff told me they'd be closed today. Well, there went my plans, but that wasn't stopping me from going. You see, I knew of a secret entrance in which you would have to go behind some trees and a part of a broken fence. But from there, you can make your way inside through a small opening. So I now head on over to the Arboretum, taking note that so far, the only people I've seen were Amanda at the bookstore and Henry, one of the janitors that works at my dorm. When I reach the Arboretum, it's around 7pm, and I was able to see what Amanda was talking about. There was a sign on the front fence saying the Arboretum was closed for the week for remodeling. Well, like I mentioned, I walk all the way to the other side of this half mile long Arboretum, and I arrive to my secret entrance. As I made my way behind some trees, I thought I had heard what sounded like movement on the other side of the fence, but I blamed it on myself moving through the branches. Up ahead of me, I was able to see the fence I'd mentioned, with a sign that now said do not enter. I know one thing, that wasn't there before, so I figured they had learned of this entrance and were planning on fixing it. Regardless, I ignored the sign and crawled through the small opening, making my way inside the Arboretum. Something else I did notice was it looked like there were signs of people that had entered earlier. I could see tracks and footprints on the ground as they made their way further into this wooded area. That should have acted as a warning sign to leave, but I was feeling brave and confident. I now proceed to walk down one of the various dirt trails that heads to a lake that's in the middle of the park. There are some benches and tables that students often sat at to work on homework or just enjoy the afternoon. As I'm making my way past some overgrowth, I once again happen to hear movement, and I even saw what looked to be a small shadow in my peripheral vision. I look back, only to see nothing, and that's when I hear what sounded like the meowing of a cat. Funny, I thought, but it's not a surprise to see or even hear animals walking about. I ignore the sound and I continue on until I finally reach the lake, and here I proceed to take a seat at one of the tables, but that's not before I happen to notice a backpack that laid on one of the benches. I'd say it was about a hundred feet away from me. It was weird seeing an empty backpack, but once again, I'm trying to explain it away as something innocent. I take out my iPod and I put some music on, and along with that I take out my drawing pad, 
and I end up drawing and listening to music for about half an hour. After some time, I'm interrupted by a loud yelling, and from the sound of it, it was getting closer. I'm now paying full attention as I see an older-looking woman make her way out of the trees in front of me, and she's heading towards the backpack. I'd say she was probably in her early 30s, but with the older-looking sweater she had on, she looked to be at least 50. Immediately, I felt something was off, because I started thinking about the tracks I'd seen earlier, and even the evidence of someone making their way into the Arboretum. As I'm pondering this, she happens to take notice of me, and slowly, she started stumbling her way toward me. Each and every step she took closer to me, I could feel as my heart skipped a beat, but I remember I sat there, thinking just how unbelievable this entire situation was. I know what you're thinking, I should have just got up and left, but I stayed put, thinking she was innocent enough. First thing she did was she sat right next to me at the table. I mean, she could have chosen the other side, but no, literally right next to me. First thing she does is she puts the backpack on the table, and then she says, Hi there. I hope you don't mind that I sat here. I was wondering, do you have any money on you I could have? Also, that's a nice drawing pad. Mind if I draw something on it? Normally I wouldn't mind anyone using my drawing pad, but I didn't know who this person was. On top of that, the way she talked really made it seem like she had other intentions. This was now when I looked at my phone and I noticed it was around 7.30pm, and with the night slowly approaching, I figured now was the perfect excuse to leave. Still, in order not to cause any trouble, I gave her a couple of dollars I had left over from the convenience store, and I ended up leaving. I'm now making my way out of there, and as I turn around, I see her take something out of her backpack, and now I can see some smoke making its way into the air. Figures. That probably explained what she was doing out there. That wasn't the end of it, though. I eventually can see the small opening ahead of me, and I could once again hear the meowing from earlier. This time, I actually paid attention to it, but as I focused in on the sound some more, I started realizing it wasn't actually a cat. As I focused, it sounded more like a person was making the noise, not a cat. This was when I shouted out, Okay, who's out there? And... What do you want from me? I'm now able to hear laughter, and that was followed by the sounds of a person laughing. Come on now, that's not a nice attitude to give your new friends. Out from behind one of the larger trees steps out the lady from the bench, but now she was joined by another older looking gentleman. They now start making their way toward me, and you can bet I wasted zero time getting through the entrance and making a mad dash towards campus security. Of course, I couldn't just tell them I was there, considering I wasn't supposed to be there. Instead, I ended up telling the security guard I happened to be walking in the area, and I saw a couple of people go inside the Arboretum. Apparently, it was serious enough for them to call campus officers, and about 20 minutes later, those two from earlier were taken away. Like I imagined, it turned out they were actually up to no good, and it's nice to know they aren't anywhere near the campus. I just hope I don't ever have to see them again. Story number two. We find him on the lonely abandoned dark road. This happened back in the early 2000s. At the time, I was staying with my sister in the Netherlands for summer vacation. Cell phones were also just barely starting to make their way around to people, and I was lucky to have my own. I'm originally from Wales, so it was a nice change from my busy lifestyle I was used to. Out where my sister lived, it was nothing but old homes and miles of empty farmlands and fields. Thankfully, she wasn't located too far from town, so if I ever wanted to go out for the night, I could. This was also during a time when people walked around at night, and you never did worry about too much. I think that's probably why I was so confident to walk around on my own. I remember one evening, my sister was working and I was actually in town helping her at her job. She worked at a bakery in which I ended up working there for a few months. Honestly, I can still remember the smell of all the delicious pastries we made together, but that's not really important. This evening it was around 8pm, and we would be closing in about 30 minutes. The store actually closes at 9, but we needed time to close the shop. About 5 minutes before we closed, this older man who looked to be in his 50s walks into the store with a backpack, looking really anxious and nervous. My sister is telling him that if he needed something, it had to be quick, because we would be closing soon. He ends up telling us, I don't care. I just need a place to hide. 
Do you mind if I stay here? I'm sorry, what? You need a place to hide and you wanted to stay here? Yeah, sorry, that wasn't going to happen. This is when I stepped in and I tell him with an affirmative voice, I'm sorry, sir, but you need to leave. Now. That seems to do the trick, as he gives us the mean eyes, then runs off into the night. That, unfortunately, wouldn't be our last encounter with him. Both me and my sister found the encounter pretty weird, but we soon laugh it off after closing the store and heading out to our home. Her house is about a 20-minute walk outside of town that leads you down this quiet and lonely road where eventually you reached her neighborhood. Well, right as we leave, a security guard walks up to us and he's wanting to know if we'd seen anybody suspicious in the past half hour. That's when we thought about the stranger from earlier and we tell him about what had happened. He thanks us for the information, but before we could get another word out of him, he ends up running down the road we had mentioned we had last seen him. Okay, well that was weird, but we once again forget about it, and we continue to head to her house. I want to say 10 minutes before we reached her house, we are able to see somebody walk up to the road from the nearby park. One closer look confirmed it was the man from earlier. Now we were starting to become nervous, because what were the chances of finding the same person? And on top of that, apparently he had done something because the security guard was looking for him. Sadly for me and my sister, it's late at night, and with the little lighting from the street lamps ahead of us, we had no idea if he was alone or not. We had two options, get on her cell phone and call for help, or run, or you know, why not both? We don't even have to do that, because we soon hear the sounds of sirens making their way towards us. Before he leaves, he ends up yelling out to us, Whatever you do, don't tell them you saw me. Then he proceeds to head into the park. You bet we do the complete opposite, and we tell the officer we had seen the man run off into the nearby park. Yes, they do end up getting him and finding a bunch of money and stolen goods in his backpack. I guess the reason he was on the run and wanting to hide was because he had stolen some things. It's safe to say that if it weren't for help arriving at the time it did, things might have turned out differently. After all, we were pretty much in the middle of nowhere on a lonely country road. Number 3. About 10 years ago, I was living in a small apartment. I was living in downtown San Jose, California, not too far away from San Jose State University. If anyone has ever been to the downtown area, or is from here, then you know it can have its fair share of interesting people. It wouldn't be a surprise to hear sirens late at night, or even the sounds of people arguing outside. Still, the reason I'd chosen to live here was because it was what I could afford at the time, and it wasn't too far away from campus. That's where I was studying. In case you're wondering why I didn't just go to the dorm room, it's because I had this bad experience with a fellow roommate, but that's a different story for another day. Anyways, like I mentioned, I was attending school at the university as well as living paycheck to paycheck. I worked on campus at the bookstore from Thursday to Sunday, and Monday through Thursday morning, I went to school. So since my apartment wasn't exactly in the greatest location, there was a series of weeks where I noticed this guy who always sat by the entrance to my apartment door. He never would say or do anything, but I did find him suspicious. There was even a time I sat by the kitchen window eating cereal, and I happened to look out the window. That's when I noticed he just stood there staring at me. Of course, as soon as he saw me, he went running down the street. On another occasion, I was returning late at night from work, and I found that he was sleeping on the bench that was on my front porch. That time around, I ended up calling the nearby security, and they ended up having him leave. That, sadly, wasn't the end of it, and on another occasion of returning late at night from school, I ended up discovering something. It was around 1 in the morning, and it had been raining pretty hard that evening. Of course, of all days, I hadn't brought my umbrella with me, so you can imagine I was pretty much making a beeline towards my apartment. As soon as I stepped inside, I go to my room and I take a warm shower. I guess in the process of doing so, I would forgotten to lock the front door, because suddenly, I become aware of somebody making their way around my apartment. I remember I was in the shower, which is located right next to my room, and I was able to hear the distinct sounds of somebody opening my drawers. I had no idea what to do. And for a second, I thought I'd left my phone in my room, but thankfully for me, I'd found it on the sink countertop. As quietly as I could, I locked my door, and then I called for help. Not even five minutes later, 
I could hear my security guard friend knocking on the door, telling me he was there. The reason I called him was because he worked at night walking around the area, and I figured since he was the closest to me, he could get there before officers. Sadly, by the time he did arrive, whoever had walked inside my apartment was already gone. What was found, however, were a bunch of muddy footprints in my room, as well as some money and jewelry I'd left out missing. We never did see him again after that night, which is a good thing, but I never did get my necklace and earrings back. If there was one good thing, however, my friends ended up helping me pay for some new ones soon after it happened. Story number five. The man who visits my coffee shop for months, then just disappears. This is the first time I'm sharing this story with all of you, since thus far, I've only told a couple of friends about it. This took place around fall of 2013, and I was 19 years old at the time. I started working at a coffee shop that was located next to a pretty empty shopping center. There you had Target, TJ Maxx, PetSmart, and a couple of fast food restaurants. I say it's empty because even with there being popular stores, it was nothing in comparison to the new mall that just opened on the other side of town. That's where everyone went to do their shopping, so you can bet we got even less customers at the coffee shop I was working at. Anyways, as I mentioned, I started working here to earn some extra money, and at first, everything seemed pretty normal. I was working in the mornings from 9am to 3pm, from Monday to Friday, and during those first two to three months, nothing out of the ordinary happened. Around the end of November, however, I ended up changing my schedule to nighttime, since now, I was helping take care of my grandma in the mornings. This now would mean I worked from 3 p.m. until closing at 9 p.m. Right as soon as my schedule changed, however, I started noticing the new customer who at first seemed like just your average ordinary guy. I remember working one afternoon and this older gentleman with his fancy suit and tie walked into the store and ordered your normal cup of coffee. It started off pretty innocent enough and there would be occasions where he would compliment the t-shirt I had on or even my hairstyle. Over time, however, I would be leaving work at night and I would happen to catch him parked in the parking lot staring at me any time I walked to my car. I didn't notice it at first, until one evening, he parked a couple of parking spaces next to me. Well, on that same night as I was about to leave, I was able to see the light of a camera, and when I turned around, I could see he was taking pictures. Now I was really starting to feel that there was something more to this, so on the following morning, I ended up telling my co-workers about it. They obviously thought it was weird, but we of course did our best to explain it away as something else. Following that instance, we hadn't seen him for about a week, and we started to think that perhaps he was just visiting town. However, the following week, I started to notice somebody driving by my house at 3 in the morning. My house was located towards the end of the street, where if a car drove down, they could use my driveway to turn back down to the neighborhood. Well, this one night, I had gotten up and I'd take a look out the window but now I could see that somebody was parked in my driveway. You see, I was living alone at the time, so I did find it weird, but eventually the lights to the car would turn on, and immediately I recognized the vehicle. It was the same older model Honda that I'd seen that man from my work driving. Still, I had no proof it was him since it could have just been a similar car. Fast forward another couple of months, the activity seemed to have settled down, and I was finally forgetting about the encounters. On this night, I was the only one left at the store, and I was in charge of closing. I'd already closed the front door, and at the moment, I was taking the trash out to the dumpster in the back. As a side note, it was raining that night, and obviously at around 9.30pm, it was pretty dark. Well, as I'm throwing the trash away, I see two things. One, I can see what looks to be an older model Honda, and two, I was able to see somebody who stood right next to it. Instantly, I remember the man from a couple of months ago, and just like that, this person starts making his way toward me. It's hard to see who he was, but as they passed by a street lamp, I instantly recognized him. Something was telling me that unless I went back inside the store, this could turn out bad, so I quickly make my way back inside the coffee shop and I close and lock the door. The only thing with this door was there was this little window with a curtain covering it, but if somebody was there, they could easily look inside. Just to make sure I wasn't overreacting, I'd take a look through the window, only to see nobody. Perhaps I'd mistaken that person and I was just imagining things. 
But no, moments later, I can see him walk up to the door, where he now proceeds to knock on it with all the force he had. Open the door. It's your friend. Come on, I just want to talk. I mean, come on, let's face it. I'm here all by myself. It's late at night, it's raining, and now I have this guy who, as far as I knew, had been following my daily schedule for the past couple of months. Immediately, I run over to the countertop and I grab my cell phone and I call for help. All the meanwhile, I'm hearing him knocking at the door, saying that if I don't open the door, I would be sorry. Eventually, he seems to have lost interest, and I could hear tires screeching as they start making their way out of the parking lot. Eventually, officers do arrive, and I finally gave them a description. They told me they would keep a lookout for him and drive around the area. About an hour later, they find the car abandoned in an alleyway in the downtown area. Sadly, they never do find him, and as far as I know, he's still out there somewhere. I ended up quitting the job a couple of weeks later, and I moved in with a friend on the other side of town. My co-workers tell me they no longer see him there, so as far as we know, it's remained a mystery. Story number 6. Me and my girlfriend's strange encounter with the mysterious van. To give you some background information, me and my girlfriend at the time, who in this story we will call Alexis, had formed our own little musical act. I had met her in middle school and after being friends for years, we were finally a couple. But that's besides the point. The point of this story is talking about a pretty concerning experience we had. It was the summer of 2010, and we had just graduated from high school a couple of weeks ago in June. Now, during our time in high school, we would play music at parties or even at friends' homes, but we never actually thought about going on a road trip and playing our music. That was actually a dream of ours, and this summer, we were planning on doing just that. Our plan was to drive from our town in Southern California and visit various coffee shops and other musical and art-driven locations. I remember our first stop was playing at a coffee shop in San Francisco. This was actually our first time ever visiting, and I can remember how excited we were to finally have our little dream come true. So, we do make it to San Francisco, and we play our music just fine, albeit with a larger audience than what we expected. Honestly, I was expecting maybe about 50 people at most, but little did I know, this coffee shop goes all out, and we were playing in front of at least 500 people. They had this parking area right next to the shop, and that's where they had the stage for the musicians to play. Okay, we'll fast forward until after the show. That's when the series of events would start to occur. Me and Alexis were actually planning on leaving that same night, because we had another show in Oregon the next evening. Before leaving, however, we stayed around to talk to a couple of the other musicians. I remember after talking with them for a while, this group of guys who I'd say were in their late 30s walked up to us and wanted to know if they could take a picture. Okay, well, nothing wrong with that, I guess. We take a picture with them, and one of them says to my girlfriend, Hey, wouldn't you rather want to spend time with us? Your boyfriend seems pretty boring, to be honest. Obviously, I wasn't too happy with hearing that, but I figured they were just messing around. We ignore them, and soon we head over to where a car was parked. As we're going down the alleyway, me and my girlfriend can see that same group from earlier. They're seemingly waiting at one of the corners. Our car was just a few feet away from us, but before we get inside, they end up saying aloud, Come on, honey. Are you sure you don't want to stay here with us? That was enough for one evening. We get inside our car, and soon we try to put the encounter behind us. It's now around 10 p.m., but with all the coffee I had, I was looking at pulling an all-night drive. I'd say around an hour later, we're pretty much out in the middle of nowhere, and we ended up stopping to take a break. Up ahead of us, there was a stop with a convenience store that we were planning on filling up our car at. Well, as we pulled into the station, I became aware of a white van pulling up behind our vehicle. Now, I didn't really pay attention to it too much, but for some reason, it looked familiar. It's like I'd just seen it, but I couldn't really explain it. Either way, me and my girlfriend walked inside the convenience store, and we pick up some snacks and water. Well, as we're paying for our things, I happen to take a look out the window, and I could see a sight I would never forget. Remember those guys from earlier? Turns out that white van I'd seen them stand next to in the alleyway was the same van that was parked behind our car. I can now see as one of them grabs a crowbar and breaks one of the windows and starts taking out our guitars from the back seat. I wanted to go out there and say something, but the cashier stops me on my tracks because he noticed that another one had a baseball bat with them. 
Immediately he gets on the phone and calls nearby officers, who ended up arriving about 10 minutes later. Looking back, I regret not going out there and saying something, but then again, there were more of them than me, and with a baseball bat and a crowbar, let's just say I wouldn't stand a chance. Sadly, our window was broken and our guitars were stolen, and sadly, we don't make it to the show since we had to get our window repaired. But the good news was that group from the other night were found breaking into somebody else's car. We do get our guitars back, albeit with a few dents and scratches, but we continued on with our musical adventure a week later. Number 7. Growing up in a small community, I never really expected to have my so-called experience when I was home alone. It's sad to think because home is supposed to be the place you feel most safe, so why is it that this had to happen? Regardless, I'm here to tell you all about what happened on this evening, but first, I will start off with your basic information. When this took place, I was 15 years old, and I was staying at home on my own. It was a Friday afternoon, and I had just returned from a busy day at school. We had a bunch of examinations that day, so you bet that as soon as I walked through the front door, I threw my backpack to the back of the couch, and immediately, I turned the television on to enjoy some afternoon cartoons. My parents ended up arriving at around 6 p.m., but they would be leaving at around 7 to go and visit my uncle and aunt, who were celebrating their anniversary. I told my parents I needed to study for an exam, which actually was a lie. I just wanted an excuse to be able to stay up late eating snacks and playing video games. So, they end up leaving and now it's just me at home with my trusted Game Boy Advance. I remember it had just started to rain when my parents left, and I couldn't wait to lay in bed and play my games and listen to the sound of rain. At around 7.30pm, however, I get a call from one of the neighbors down the street. She was an older lady named Emily, who I would help out on occasion. I usually helped her with housework or even helped her out with the groceries. Hi there, Thomas. Hey, I have your money from your work for the past two weeks. Did you want to stop by and pick it up? Of course I did. I mean, it would be great because that way I could order a pizza. Sorry, Mom. As nice as your salad and soup was you left me, I was more interested in getting a pizza. Therefore, with my umbrella, I make my way down the street and head over to the house to get the money. Well, as it turned out, I stayed for about an hour, keeping her company and enjoying some awesome milk and cookies. There went my appetite for pizza, I guess. Finally, at around 8.45, I proceed to make the three-minute walk back to my house. That was when I first noticed something. We have this fence in our backyard, with a door right next to the side of her house. For some reason, it was wide open. Now, yes, I was out in the back cleaning, but I do remember having it closed when I left. I tell myself it was most likely open from the rain and wind and I forget about it. That would just be the first sign that something was happening here. Fast forward about an hour later, and remember how I said I wasn't in the mood for pizza? Well, I ended up changing my mind and ordering a late night meal. I figured that whatever I didn't finish, I could warm up in the next morning. Eventually, the pizza delivery man arrives and I go to pay as per usual. When it comes to signing the receipt, he had forgotten his pencil in the car, so he quickly runs over to grab it. I now sign the receipt and he tells me to make sure to close the door at the side of my house. Funny, since I knew it was closed, but I thank him for the information and I proceed to close it yet again. With my pizza in one hand and a DVD of my favorite shows in the DVD player, I sat there and ate for about 20 minutes until I could hear the sound of that same door opening slightly. I knew it was that same door right away, because it makes a distinct sound any time it was opened. Really, it was just old, so I think that's why. I looked over at my watch, and I now saw it was around 11pm, but as far as I knew, my parents weren't supposed to be home. I end up calling them just to make sure. Hey mom, I was wondering, did you guys get home already? Because I can hear the side door being opened. No. Sorry, Thomas. We're still over at your Aunt Susan's house. I froze, because I found it way too convenient that door kept opening on its own. Besides, by this point, the rain and wind had settled down. Immediately, I run over to the kitchen window that had a perfect view of the door, and I saw it was open. You can bet I now proceed to run to all the doors and windows and double-check to make sure they were locked. I'm glad I did so, because a couple of the windows were actually unlocked. Once I had everything locked... I head out through the kitchen door and go to close the fence door for good. This time, I get one of the trash cans and place it in front of it. 
Now, try as hard as I did, it wouldn't move. So that was telling me that this entire time, somebody must have been opening it. It wasn't the rain or the wind that was causing it. Just then, I'm able to hear what sounded like something breaking, and that's when I went silent. The noise sounded like it came from the front of the house, so as carefully and as quietly as I could, I made my way to the front, where now, I could see one of the living room windows was broken. Soon, I'm able to see the light from a small spotlight, and what appears to be somebody in a dark hoodie making their way around my house. One thing was for sure, I wasn't going in there, so instead I ended up calling my parents and explaining what was happening. I must have been on the phone for what seemed like ages, because eventually whoever was inside the house walked out through the front door and started making their way down to the driveway. By this point, I was on the other side of the street and I'm looking towards where this person was. I once again go silent as I'm able to see this person heading toward me. Great, they probably saw I was on the phone and now he's going after me. Instead, he goes to the nearby parked car. He gets inside and immediately he leaves. I wasn't really able to get a good look at him because of the dark clothing he had on, but I knew he had a backpack with him. Inside, I'm sure he had various belongings and other valuables. Eventually, an officer arrives and I begin to explain everything from the noises to see the man getting in the car. As it turned out, this wasn't actually the first time something like this happened. He told me for the past couple of months, there had been stories of break-ins, and from the sound of it, the description he gave seemed to match. We did eventually get our window fixed, and yes, some things were taken, but thankfully, he didn't take our most valuable things. In case you're wondering, we still ended up living there, and we didn't hear about any more break-ins after that. Story number 8. Follow Through the Woods. Let me first start off by saying that yes, I realize I could have done better, no need to tell me. But with that said, let me describe my area, as well as what happened a couple of months ago. For starters, I live near Eureka Springs in Arkansas, a charming little mountain town that's pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. It features caverns, lakes, rivers, woods, you name it. My neighborhood had this nice wooded area surrounding it, and if you follow the trail, it eventually will lead you to the other side of town. There, you can find a shopping center, and even a movie theater. I myself enjoy spending time out there, as I take the opportunity to go running on the trail, or just walk my dog. However, after what happened the other night, I'm starting to think that walking out in the woods at night isn't exactly the smartest idea. I did mention I had a dog, right? She was a two-year-old golden retriever who I took on walks on the other side of the woods. From there, we would visit the pet store and I would get her various treats. It was always a fun way to spend the afternoon. Well, on this afternoon, I was planning on going to visit my friend Kimberly, who lived on the other side of the woods. We were actually planning on watching the new Avengers movie, and I wanted to get to the midnight showing. So I ended up leaving my house at around 8pm, and I head out into the woods to meet up with my friend. Remember, up until that point, I had no worries about walking out there. I did see a neighborhood couple who was walking their dog, and they wished me a good night as I continued on. About 20 minutes later, I reach the exit, and soon, I meet up with Kimberly. First, we go and get dinner. Then we get to the movie theater, and we proceeded to watch the film. By the time all was said and done, it's around 3 a.m., and everybody is just getting to their cars. Of course, Kimberly offered to take me home, but I told her I would be fine. After all, with all the popcorn and the food we had, I wanted to be able to burn the food. Again, she tries to reassure me it was no problem, but I tell her this is what I wanted to do. Mistake number one. Once she left, I was now left alone in the parking lot, and I thought about taking a lift or something. Thing is, I didn't want to spend any more money that evening, and I figured I could go ahead and just run back home if I wanted to. Mistake number two. Well, as soon as I stepped into the woods, that's when all of it started to happen. Of course, not even five minutes in, I can hear somebody walking behind me, but of course whenever I would turn around, I was met with the empty trail. I sort of just laughed it off, saying I still had all the ringing of the loudspeakers in the movie theater in my ears, so I just kept on walking. Even so, I started getting this anxiety, something that up until that point, I would only get right before I take an exam. To calm my nerves, I tell myself just to walk faster. After all, if somebody was out here, then I could outrun them since I was on track and field. 
Well, there was no need for me to keep telling myself I was just hearing things and my mind was playing tricks, because I once again take a look behind me, only this time, somebody in a dark hoodie is running up to me. I mean, seriously, I highly doubt anyone is just going to be running at 3 in the morning. As this is happening, I'm able to see the end of the woods up ahead of me, but just like that, two others show up. Now was the point I knew I was in some serious trouble. Mind you, I don't even know who these three people were and what they wanted, but what I did know is if I didn't lose them, then I probably would have shown up in the local paper missing. Finally, as soon as I'm out of the woods, I can see what looked to be the neighborhood security guards walking around. As soon as I yelled out to them, the three from earlier take off running back into the woods. I of course tell them about what happened, but when all was said and done, I never did see them again. But as an update, something similar happened to another couple who had been walking around at night. Little did they know the husband was a martial arts instructor, and let's just say he taught them a valuable lesson.